Tonight, a common virus morphs into a killer. Despair for a young family as the flu takes away their mum. Sydney's vicious petrol wars, how a new player could be a blessing for motorists. The road to ruin. The boozy driver in Bellevue Hill who will regret this night for a long time. And the robots that could save your life this summer. Get ready, Sydney, for remote-controlled rescues. This is 10 News with Sandra Sully and Bill Woods. It was almost too horrible for this average Australian family to believe. A healthy young mother admitted to hospital with what her loved ones thought was a simple flu. Today, Katrina Day died, her body unable to fight off the virus. And that has sparked serious concerns across the country with the grim warning tonight that no one is completely safe. Danielle Eisdale has the story for us tonight. Danny, this thing can sneak up on you with deadly and devastating results. Absolutely, Sandra. And the Day family now know that better than anyone. The flu is one of those illnesses we often underestimate because it's all around us and most sufferers recover fully. Some try to soldier through it, so busy are their lives. But Katrina Day was a busy, fit and healthy young young mum, but when she caught the flu, the complications killed her. To Katrina Day's four kids and husband Nick, she was everything. That's all she ever wanted, she just wanted kids. She wanted her own home, which she, she did, we got that, and she just wanted to grow up with them. And we can do plenty to stop its spread, Bill and Sandra. A simple start is washing our hands and covering our mouths when we cough. Danielle Eisdale, thank you. A Sydney driver will be wishing he could have his time over again after a late night dash to the shops that could land him in jail. He's been charged with being drunk behind the wheel after ploughing into a string of parked cars at Bellevue Hill. Here's Ashley Brown. From one car to the next, a total mess. The driver allegedly responsible for the destruction was in a Range Rover. Now, around the same time, across town in San Susi, a young driver was severely injured in a smash moments after a police chase was called off. Police say the 24-year-old crashed into a signpost. The car almost split in half. The petrol wars are hotting up with a new heavy hitter set to enter the market. Cut price retailer Costco is promising to drive prices down if it's allowed to sell discount fuel at its new site. Jackie Maddock is at Costco headquarters in Auburn tonight. Jackie, can this really make a difference? Good evening, Sandra. Absolutely it can. Currently, petrol sitting at an average of $1.45 a litre. That is a 13-week high. There's nothing our fuel market needs more right now than competition. Large-scale, large discount retailing has been a big hit down under. Profits from petrol pushed Caltex to record a stellar 74% surge in first-half profit to $197 million. That after its July decision to shut down its oil refinery in Cornell. Hundreds of jobs will go. Caltex branded the 60-year-old Port Botany plant unprofitable. Now, as the petrol players do battle, it's Mother Nature conspiring to drive petrol prices higher. Tropical storm Isaac is wreaking havoc in the oil-rich Gulf of Mexico, and that is set to decimate supply and drive prices and demand higher. OK, Jackie Maddock, thank you. Still to come, did police tell the truth over the fatal shooting of this mentally ill man? Plus, the hospital volunteer who's dedicated 43 years to helping others. Also, 70 years on, remembering the men who helped delay a Japanese advance on Australia. And the schoolboy sensation brightening Monday morning for some Sydney pupils. This is 10 News, checking traffic with Vic LaRusso, who's above the M4 tonight. Billy, it's a, a serious accident. The accident occurred about 50 minutes ago here at Parramatta, westbound on the M4, just before Church Street. You can see now authorities are actually blocking all westbound lanes. It's occupied two lanes, this accident. As a result of the crash, the delays are significant. It looks to me now they're just towing a few vehicles out of the way, but with the complete closure there of the M4, the delays stretch all the way back into the inner west. It is an awful run for motorists heading home now to the Greater West once again with the M4 misbehaving with this accident.
accident. So if you're at home waiting for family or friends to try and get home this evening at a reasonable time, you need to let them know to avoid the M4 due to this serious accident. Cues are back into five dock. I'm going to keep hovering over the area, bring you an update just before sport from the carcity.com.au chopper. Former Prime Minister John Howard has unintentionally thrown a hand grenade at the feet of Tony Abbott, just when he can least afford it. Our political editor Hugh Rimmington is in Canberra with more on this story. Hugh, Mr Abbott won't like this at all, being tripped up by his political mentor. Yes, that is the case, Sandra. Uh, Tony Abbott has described himself as the ideological son of John Howard, but there's one John Howard policy that he doesn't want to be identified with, and that is work choices, which was pretty much fatal to the Howard cause back in 2007. To have it crop up again today is particularly awkward, uh, given that the polls are starting to look just a little less friendly for Tony Abbott. The blue sky, Sydney Sunshine Factory pumps out another one, Mr Bailey. Gorgeous. Ah, thank you, Miss Sully. Yes, I'm the fine foreman, the sunshine supervisor. It's a pretty city, isn't it? The last week of winter and the Golden West at its very best behind me as we come to you from top ride tonight. Uh, still around about 16 degrees. A little chilly east northeaster at 17 kilometres an hour. Temperatures are going to probably dip down to two, maybe three degrees in the greater west uh, tomorrow morning. And then up we go and we go on a brilliant big blue sky run. It is it's been fantastic, hasn't it? Let's have a look at the map of New South Wales on a marvellous looking Monday. The official depth, 1.71 metres. And guess what? Our maximum temperatures in Sydney are up two degrees on the August average. No complaints. Have a look at that. It says it all. Sure does. Thank you, Tim. Coming up, should we be doling out more money to the unemployed? Also ahead, 70 years on, remembering a special band of diggers. And did they or didn't they? Will Adelaide Zoo be hearing the pitter-patter of tiny paws? Tomorrow on Breakfast, why efforts to stamp out drugs in our prisons are failing. Plus Father's Day gift ideas and the new trend to eat desk first. What? Join us for breakfast tomorrow from 6 on 10. Tonight's headlines on 10 News, a mother of four, including a priest and a preschooler, have died from a new strain of flu. Wholesaler Costco wants to join Sydney's petrol price war, selling fuel at its new shopping warehouse. And Sydney's beaches will have new unmanned radio-controlled rescuers this summer, which can reach swimmers in distress much faster than human lifesavers. We're remembering a brave and loyal band of Aussie diggers tonight who turned back the might of the Imperial Japanese forces right on our doorstep. 70 years ago, the commandos known as Sparrow Force fought like giants in the unforgiving jungles of East Timor. Mark O'Brien has their story. In Dili, diggers came back to remember their war in Timor. Sparrow Force was there when the Japanese army moved towards Australia in 1942. 92-year-old Keith Hayes says the Aussies thought Portugal would turn up to defend its colony. But um, the Japanese had a different idea. They were coming down too. He was captured by the Japanese who shot and bayoneted him, nursed back to health and safety by local Timorese. But Sparrow Force is a fading part of our history. The Timor campaign deserves a special place in our nation's memory. A bigger place than it currently occupies. In these jungles, the Australians fought their guerrilla campaign. The odds against them were enormous. 300 commandos up against thousands of Japanese soldiers. And for a time, the Aussies were given up for dead. After months of fighting, they built this radio to contact command in Darwin, eventually sparking a covert rescue mission. Private Ted Coop survived, so today was a special day for his great-nephew, Corporal Paul James, now serving as a reservist with our forces in East Timor. It's the determination, the courage, um, especially under fire and stuff like that, is just amazing. The bonds of military and mateship run deep, then and now. Mark O'Brien, 10 News. Do you think she gave him the it's not you, it's me speech? <laughs> you love Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Still ahead, the grand tribute plan for Neil Armstrong. We'll have that in the Consec Finance Report. Plus, Prince Harry still the butt of all jokes as his Las Vegas hangover continues. And from pupil to hero, Steve Solomon goes 
back to school. Time to check back in with Vic LaRusso now, who's above that crash on the M4, Vic. Ah, terrific. Don't encourage those kids. They'll have our jobs soon. <laughs> They're a very talented young group of fellas. Great right. kids. Terrific. Um, now, Brad, the bunnies are off the booze and they are looking dangerous ahead of the final. Yeah, they are. We'll hear from Michael uh, Crocker. He hasn't just cut beers off the menu. Details next. Plus, good news for Benji Marshall. Also tonight, we'll leap from a tall building in Boston for the World Cliff Diving Series. And King Kelly KO'd at Chopum as the famous left-hander deals out perfection. Yes, has the one. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Coming up after the news from hornbags to rock gods, we've got you covered. Rock guitarist Slash and the Foxy Ladies, Kath and Kim, join us live at the desk. We'll see you soon. West's Tigers playmaker Benji Marshall has dodged a bullet and is free to play in Saturday's must-win match against Melbourne. Marshall was placed on report for this high shot on rooster Jared Warrior Hargrave. The Sharks conceal a home final tonight when they face the storm at Melbourne's Amy Park. A win means Cronulla will finish no worse than sixth. Meanwhile, the Rabbitohs are in a great position to end the club's 41-year premiership drought. And as Adam Hawes reports, they've made some sacrifices to help their cause. They got the chocolates against the eels, but there'll be no alcohol for these booze-banning bunnies. You really want to make sure you're ticking all your boxes preparation-wise and uh, getting your best performances out on the field, so yeah, it, it's a small sac sacrifice indeed. I'm off the ice cream too, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably harder. <laughs> Play of the day and old tyres may see your car career off track, but today they also saved lives. Wow. And it just, now he's got dirt on the tyres and there's not a thing that Joseph Newgarden can do. Wow. Well, Thankfully they had nice row of tyres there. And a couple of Aussie teammates had their own duel with Ryan Briscoe taking the win ahead of defending Sonoma champion Will Power. The Aussies 1-2 also wins our play of the day. Good stuff there. That is sport from Monday. See you tomorrow. See Loving you, that. Thank you, Brad. Looking ahead, a classy location for Kath and Kim's film premiere. And I'm your Daily Bailey. Come in close, come in close. It's the last week of winter and I'm going to serve it sunny side up. Have a go at the sunset. More of that on your television after the break. This weather report is proudly brought to you by Dettol Power & Pure. Leaves no harsh chemical residues behind for a healthy clean. Dettol Power & Pure. Welcome back, live and local, enchanting light tonight right across Sydney as we go live. What a season for sunsets, folks. Have you noticed they've just been absolutely beautiful? Another one unfolding in front of you. And the good news is the blue sky that you need for a brilliant sunset is going to keep on keeping on. Tomorrow, look, it'll be a bit nippy in the greater west. That's just there. Tomorrow, down to 2 or 3 degrees before the temperature bounces 20 to 21 degrees tomorrow. And then we go on a big warm curve with blue sky all over us. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday up to 24 to 26 degrees. Thursday, a cold front will play with us a little bit, but it'll be a dry cold front, so no showers in that. And then we'll pedal more blue sky right across Saturday, Sunday and Monday. A sensational last week of winter. And thanks for, to our cameraman, Timmy Manson, for putting his hand up tonight and adding to this series of sunsets. That is just magnificent. All right, let's get to the satellite tonight and uh, up we go and the slash of deep cloud from the bite to Tasmania. Thank you Tim. Before we go, Kath and Kim glammed up for their own film premiere last night at the only place really you'd expect it, a shopping centre. Fresh off the plane from filming in Italy, the pair strutted along the red carpet, lapping up the spotlight. And I'm a but drama am, queen, so I'm, I'm loving it. I love the attention because, yeah. She never, just, she, yeah, Kim, is, she's got a I was a love for the trial. She's got a narcissist syndrome. I'm a little bit um, overhyped. <laughs> Kath and Kim Dorella are in cinemas from September 6th. <laughs> that is 10 News for now. We'll have updates throughout the evening. Late news at 10.25. Here's the project. Good night.